Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we are going to get right back to work on the Datsun 240Z and today we're going to be starting on that battery tray rust that I've got. It's not going to be fun but we got to get started on it and I also got a new mic so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better and big plus I'm not going to forget to turn it on anymore because it's powered by the camera. Now if you look really hard you can probably tell there's no battery tray in there right now. And why did I know that I forget all the time about turning my mic on? Well, that's because I forgot to turn my mic on and this is the second time I'm doing the intro. I also filmed a whole bunch on removing it. Whatever, it, it's not that complicated. Uh, all I did was I used a spot weld cutter. So these I got on Amazon. I've used a few different brands. I think these are the best. Honestly, I think these work a lot better than the Eastwood ones. Uh, I was actually having to drill a little bit with like a smaller drill bit as like a pilot for this to sit. Not these, but the uh, Eastwood ones. I uh, don't have to do that at all with these. They work really well, uh, honestly, too well. And uh, I ended up putting a hole through the sheet metal that I wasn't supposed to. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to patch. But we got plenty of patching to do anyway. So we gotta actually start hacking that up and making a replacement piece for it. battery tray is cut out we are ready to move on to the next step now I'm going to clean up all this as you saw I wire wheeled some of it uh, but I'm gonna get it really well uh, clean up the frame rail a lot and uh, all the surrounding area just get rid of all the paint that way we can see exactly where we need to cut out where it'll be fine to just kind of keep but as I can already see like there's pinholes in here so I know I have to at least replace some of this uh, if not most of it so I'm planning on right now just from looking at it and with light wire wheeling that hopefully I can get away with just replacing from about right here down. So that'll like leave the fancy curvature hopefully out of this. Um, and then that way I can just worry on the one curve rather than making like a weird compound curve because that's more of something I can do by hand and I don't have the tools to do that. Like I don't have an English wheel. I don't have stretch or shrinker. I don't have any of that kind of stuff. So we're going to make do with what I have. And uh, hopefully that means that we don't have to get into crazy bends.
All right, I think I have enough stripped away that I can actually see everything that I need to cut out. So I took a flap disc, uh, like 140 grit, uh, to some of the pitted areas to see that if it would like come out or if it was too deep in there. Uh, a lot of it came out like all up in here and stuff like that. So that really goes to show that uh, I don't need to cut a lot of this stuff up here. Now, I do need to cut this section out though. Obviously, pitting's pretty bad. There's pinholes. Gotta get rid of that. Uh, so that's the plan. Probably just gonna cut straight up along here, leave a little edge here to butt weld up against. Uh, and then same thing here, we'll leave a little bit of a gap, but we're just gonna cut a little bit at a time, uh, try to get this all in one piece, patch that and get that piece fit and molded in, and then see if we need to cut any more out uh, and make little pieces from there. Uh, that way I don't have to make one big complex piece. And we have our piece cut out. Uh, as you can see, I mean, the rest really wasn't that bad. It wasn't really going through. Just those pinholes that you can see right there. And uh, there's another one right there. Uh, so it really wasn't that bad. Um, a lot of people probably wouldn't have replaced it, but it was getting pretty thin. So this should be relatively easy to patch. <laughs> it's always funny when you say that, and then it's not. Uh, but we're going to grab some steel. Got some sheet metal over there. Uh, we're going to lay this out, try to trace this out on uh, the blank piece of steel, and then we'll cut it out. So I'm not going to worry too much about grinding all that down. I am going to clean up a little bit of that uh, with the Dremel when I get some more pieces in. I don't have any pieces for it right now, so I'm not even going to bother. I'll be able to get at all the areas that I want to later, mostly like down here in the corner where it meets the frame rail, kind of clean up those welds a little bit more uh, because those are going to be the most visible. But all the visible ones are pretty clean. All of this is going to get a skim coat of seam sealer as well. So I'm going to seam seal all that so that we don't have to worry about water getting in there. Uh, anyway, we're on to this. So I just broke this piece out. This is the Z Car Depot, I believe. Uh, it's their piece that they make. It's all laser cut and then they just bend it up. And uh, fitment is, uh, could be better, definitely. But that's usually how it is when you get replacement panels like this. But definitely it's going to need quite a bit of massaging to get it in here. Uh, so we're just gonna start working it in there. This is considerably thicker than the sheet metal uh, and considerably thicker than the stock stuff. The stock stuff was only about 16 gauge. This is, I don't know, probably 12 gauge, something like that. It's pretty thick stuff, which is good. I mean, you don't have to worry about it rusting, but at the same time, it's getting welded to 22 gauge sheet metal. So it's only as strong as that. Uh, I'm going to just spot weld this on there. So I'm just gonna drill a few holes in here and uh, do a MIG welding type spot weld. Uh, so these three mounting places, which line up pretty much exactly where the old ones did. I uh, just got to bend them a little bit to get them to line up perfectly. But I'm just going to do about three or four holes in each of these mounting places. And then uh, we'll bend them, get them in place, and then start tacking this thing in. Uh, and it's really going to have to be super careful not to burn through the sheet metal because this is super thick stuff. 
Uh, but oh well, we'll go slow. Make sure we get in there without burning any huge holes in the sheet metal. All right, just finished up drilling up all the holes so we can mount the battery tray into place. It wasn't too hard to actually bend all these pieces. It's definitely a really well-made piece and they do a good job. Uh, obviously, I had to make little changes, like I had to bend that bracket in quite a bit uh, and then kind of bow this in because the uh, area where it actually goes into the car actually has like a natural curve. So that's perfectly straight. So you just kind of have to add a little bit of a curve to it. Um, and then this just need to be bent a little bit more. Um, and then a little bit grinded off of this part right here. Uh, so really not that much modification, definitely a lot easier than trying to come up with something like this on my own. And if I did, it wouldn't look near as nice or stock because uh, this is almost identical to the original piece. Uh, so it'll look really good in there once we get it in. And you guys saw me spraying some stuff on there. So that was uh, just some acid etch uh, to try to get a little bit more of that rust that's kind of in the pores. Um, there's a little bit of pitting going on in some of the other areas that I didn't want to cut out because it really isn't that bad, like the frame rail. Um, this stuff will really like kind of bring it up to light. You'll see it a lot better because of the brown. We'll start showing a lot more. Um, but we're going to let this sit for a little while. I'm going to keep getting it wet with that stuff like you're supposed to. Probably throw a couple more coats on there. Uh, and then wipe it all up, get it all nice and clean. And then we'll weld that in. Got to make sure I remove all of that stuff before I start welding it because it's terrible fumes to breathe in uh, when you spot weld that on. So that's the next plan. So we're going to let that sit for a little while. Uh, and then we'll start spot welding that in. And I'll probably throw some edge primer on there too just because of the fact that this is going to sit for a little while so i'm just probably going to spray paint before i weld it on in some of the areas that i'm not going to really be able to get at uh, that way there's some decent spray on there beforehand and this is going to be sitting for a while because this car is not going to be ready for paint for a very long very very long time <laughs> So I did spray paint most of it uh, and that was really just to get in the areas that I'm not going to be able to get later. So like underneath this, uh, so it's not uncoated later. Uh, this is weld through primer. It doesn't work that good. It kind of causes sputtering uh, and like a lot of spatter when you do it, but I think it's better than nothing. But now we're going to make sure that this is level wherever I put my level and we're going to weld this thing in. Uh, should be pretty easy to weld in just those few spot welds. Uh, and then probably going to be done for the evening. There's not much more that I'm going to do with this area. I am going to clean up a lot of the welds, especially down low, uh, once I get some more attachments for my Dremel. Uh, that's stuff that'll be easy, and I'll clean up all the welds that I can get at. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and start welding away. All right, that thing is fully welded in there. Um, so I was able to use like the spot welds that I made on the top. Um, so like those four and then those three over there, I think I had four on that side, I don't remember. Um, but the bottom two, I was just having too much difficulty trying to get good penetration on both and it was just barely holding. So I ended up welding a little stitch on the side right there and then uh, another one on the bottom. Kind of grounded it off. Once again, that's gonna be cleaned up. All those welds are going to get cleaned up quite a bit. 
Uh, that way it's easier to make that look good with a little bit of body work because um, it doesn't look that good right now. As you can see, kind of ugly. You can totally tell that that was patched. I don't want that. It'll look bad. Uh, so as long as I get all the visible welds out of there, so pretty much from about right there down and then over and then back up, uh, as long as I get all of that smoothed out, all nice and good, then I'm not too worried about it. But I want to wait till I have a little more precision, like I was saying, with the Dremel. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much done. So I could probably end this video. I'm not gonna lie, this took me a very long time to get done, mostly due to not wanting to actually get started on it. <laughs> I cut out the spot welds about three, four weeks ago of the original battery tray. Started cleaning it all up and then it kind of sat and then I did work to the Subaru, did a whole bunch of other stuff. I was just being super lazy. I didn't want to, I hate doing rust repairs, I really do. I'm not that good at it either, uh, but just comes with practice and a lot of patience too. That's really what it is, uh, of which I don't have much when it's something tedious like that. Uh, but we're gonna do better on some things like that on the car, but because that is the battery tray, you're not really gonna be able to see it and we'll make it look a lot better. Not too worried about it. I told you guys I was in the video about a minute ago. So if you haven't learned that, I'm pretty bad about ending it when I say what. Anyway, you guys have a good night. I gotta go in, clean up, get to work in a few hours. You guys have a good one.